There's a remarkable story about a rabbi known as Vashlich. He lived in the 1500s in the holy city of Tzfat. Anyway, not only was he a great Talmudist, but he was a Jewish mystic as well. One of the best of his generation. When he was 14 years old, he got married. And he had a personal custom that every morning at 3 in the morning, he would wake up and study Torah by himself. Well, his wife wanted to do something nice for him, so she would also get up at 3 in the morning, and every morning, bring a cup of hot tea and place it next to her husband in order that he should be able to enjoy it. And she was very careful not to disturb him. Well, sadly, after three years, his wife died. Now, Vashlich continued to wake up every morning and study Torah. His mother looked at the 17-year-old son and said, my goodness, someone needs to bring him tea. So she started bringing him tea every morning at 3 in the morning, very quiet. She didn't want to disturb her son. After a few months, she realized she was probably a little too old for this. Who knows? She might have been 35. Anyway, she goes next door to the poor woodcutter who lived next door to them. Had a young daughter, Chaya Fega. She said, Chaya Fega, would you mind waking up every morning and bringing tea to my son when he's studying Torah? But you have to be very careful not to disturb him. She accepted the chore gladly. Well, after the first morning, the Ashlich came running to his mother. Said, Mom, did you bring me tea this morning? She goes, well, no, actually, I didn't do it. Chaya Fega, the girl who lives next door, she brought you the tea. So she runs next door, sees Chaya Fega, says, Chaya Fega, did you bring me the tea this morning? She said, well, I certainly did. Well, let me ask you a question. Why did you bring me two glasses of tea? Chaya Fega had a very puzzled look on her face, and she just said, I just thought it would be the right thing to do. She goes, what do you mean? Well, you were, if I was bringing you tea, I also thought that I should bring tea to the person who you were studying with. Ashley said, oh my goodness. For three years, my first wife brought tea every morning at three in the morning for me. For several months, my mother brought tea just for me every morning because they never saw that every morning I was studying with Eliyahu Navi, Elijah the prophet. Wow, will you marry me? He realized, Ashley realized, that Chaya Fega, that was his soulmate. We understand that a, you know someone is a soulmate when they understand things about you that no one else can understand. They see things about you no one else sees. Rabbis explain that to bring two soulmates together is more difficult, so to speak, for the Almighty than splitting the sea. Why splitting the sea? Because it's completely unnatural. The sea is supposed to be calm. But here in the splitting of the sea, the Jewish people were walking through. There was a pillar of fire in the front, the Egyptians in the back, wild animals all around. Somehow the Jewish people were saved. If you have found your soulmate, then you have to realize that it's such a blessing from the Almighty. If you haven't found your soulmate, so then you have to pray to the Almighty and ask that he brings the soulmate to you. And if you have the great merit to live a life with your soulmate, then you have to let them know how much you appreciate them and work very hard on making sure that they are the happiest soulmate that could possibly exist in this world.